Hey, so in this video, I wanted to talk a little bit about style, particularly how style pertains to comic book art. And I'm going to use David Mazzucchelli as an example. Um, he's one of my favorite comic book artists, but I think he's a really great example of a comic book artist who uses style as a storytelling device in addition to just an aesthetic choice. So I think when we're trying to think of our style or approach our style or develop it, I feel like sometimes it can be a little bit of an intimidating thing to approach because we feel as though we have to pick this one particular style and then just kind of hone in on that and develop that throughout our career. When with comics, every line you make in your art really just contributes to the overall story that you're trying to tell. So depending on the story that you're telling, uh, you could actually use a different approach stylistically. So you could see here what we're looking at is more of David Mazzucchelli's early work. This is probably what he's uh, very recognized for. This was his uh, run on Daredevil with Frank Miller writing. And um, you could see here, this was like that quintessential kind of like 80s Marvel comic style. And uh, it's really beautifully done. It's a bit... Uh, tighter it's really beautifully rendered um and because it's kind of like a traditional comic book superhero story that he's telling he's using that style and that aesthetic and that language to really enhance that particular story even though this is like a very mainstream superhero comic you can see that there's some really beautiful like artistic things going on on these pages um, if you ever get a chance to take a look at the artist edition they collected this run that he did with frank miller into an oversized artist edition and it's just beautiful to see those originals because you can see just like the care and the detail that went into these kinds of like ornate backgrounds and um, just some of the stuff he does with like white paint to um, to show like different accents and all that kind of stuff. It's really worth checking out. But um, just a few years later, he teamed up again with Frank Miller writing and um, worked on Batman Year One. I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this book. This is another book that he's very well recognized for. And you can see that this was only like a couple of years later, but his style is starting to evolve and change. So I feel like it's a mix of his style evolving, but I also feel like it's a bit of a conscious decision to use a different approach just because it's a different kind of story. It's a different world. You know, this is like telling the, the origin story of Batman. And so it's much darker. Um, there's a lot heavier black areas. Um, there's bolder lines. There's less fine lines and less like noodling like he had in some of the uh, Daredevil work. So I feel like his style approach here really helps to tell this particular story. This kind of like high contrast world that he's created here really helps describe, you know, that gritty Gotham City. Yeah, and, and the colors in Batman Year One are beautiful. I forget who worked on the colors, but they really um, accentuate the line work so well. So the argument can definitely be made that this might have just been a natural evolution of his style rather than something that was purposefully done just for this particular story. But I feel like it definitely lends itself to uh, describing that Gotham City world. And in fact, this book really became the uh, inspiration for a lot of the newer Batman movies uh, in the last 10, 15, 20 years. So a little bit after Batman Year One, or perhaps even at the same time, uh, he was putting together a book called Rubber Blanket, and I think it was him and his wife, and it was a collection of short stories, and then I think there was a few different anthologies put out over the course of several years, but one of the more popular stories that came out of this collection was, I think this is called Big Man. I first read this when I was in college, and I was blown away by the fact that this was the same guy who drew Batman and Daredevil. I almost couldn't wrap my head around the fact that someone could kind of jump around with their style as much. As you can see here, this is a much more, I guess, uh, simplified, broken down, even more graphic kind of version of uh, the work that he was doing in Batman Year One. And uh, it's much more like crudely drawn. 
and there's a different kind of detail. It feels though like he's kind of like carving out shapes out of like heavier, chunkier black lines. And I really love that. You know, you can see some background areas are just kind of suggested. Certain characters, when they're in the distance, are really, really roughly, almost crudely drawn. And um, sometimes when you see that kind of stuff, you, you assume that somebody like that perhaps just doesn't know how to draw maybe anatomy too well, or they don't know how to draw certain background elements too well. But you could obviously see that he knows how to draw all that stuff. And I feel as though that was definitely a conscious decision, something that he was utilizing in the storytelling because he wasn't telling a traditional uh, superhero comic or a mainstream comic. He was telling a different kind of story and he wanted you to have, I feel like a much more of an emotional response to the story. So all those little details that he would have probably put into a Marvel or DC book, he kind of took out and it was a much more artistic approach to get a different kind of reaction out of the reader. A little bit later on, he went to work on a comic book adaptation of the novel City of Glass. And for me, this is one of my favorite works of his because I feel like it blends those two things together. You know, that um, almost that crude, chunky lines of the story that he did in Rubber Blanket and then some of that really clean, bold graphic stuff from Batman Year One. I mean, you can tell here that it's a lot more... I guess cartoony or alternative for lack of a better word, but the storytelling in this particular book is, I feel like some of his best. Um, it's not an easy thing to adapt um, prose, you know, it's like a, a novel into a comic, but uh, he does it in a really interesting way, a very kind of poetic way. And um, I love his panel arrangements and I just love the simple character designs. The main character is, incredibly cartoony and uh, simple, but he's set oftentimes against pretty elaborate backgrounds. I mean, the way he draws New York City in this book is really inspiring to me. I just love the simplicity of it, but it's so descriptive that it just feels real. And when you put that super cartoony figure against that setting, as Scott McCloud would say in Understanding Comics, you really find yourself in that particular world that that character is in. Uh, he calls it masking, where uh, when there's a cartoony, simplified character in, a, in an environment that is much more realistic and recognizable to us as, as real life, um, what the artist and the writer is doing is, is putting you, the reader, in the position of that uh, more cartoony character. So you have a much more emotional response to the character, and then you have a much more believable relationship with the background. So he's much more articulate in the way that he uh, describes that method, but it's, it's called masking. And I feel like in the City, City of Glass uh, adaptation, David Mazzucchelli does that really, really well. So then years later, in 2007, um, he put out a graphic novel. And I, I think, I'm not sure if he's put out a graphic novel since then, but um, it's called Asteros Polyp. I'm not sure if I'm even saying that right, but um, this is one of his books that I've never actually read. I've, I've looked at the art quite a bit. And as you can see here, it's completely different from anything so far that I feel like he's done prior to this. He's really taking a, a much more... Uh, design cartoony approach and color is also a big part of this book as well um, I'm pretty sure the story's main character is like a famous architect so he's in some ways like referencing some fine art with uh, some of the textures that he uses and um, yeah it's it's probably his most experimental work and it's crazy if you go back and look at some of the daredevil stuff and then look at this it's it's very hard to believe that it's the same artist but for me that's super inspiring because it, it means that as a comic book artist you don't have to put yourself in a box you know creatively there's you know a multitude of stories that you can tell there's uh so many different ways that you can that you can draw those stories as well so um when i look at this stuff it really just kind of inspires me and it kind of like opens up the, the doors and kind of like takes me out of whatever stylistic box I might feel like I'm in. So hopefully this video is inspiring to you as well and gives you a different way to look at 
style as less of an aesthetic choice but more of a of a uh, storytelling choice so um, I'm just gonna end the video here with some of his uh, uh, him revisiting some of these classic characters that he drew uh, decades later so these are still back from like 07 but he's drawing Batman and Daredevil with a, a different understanding of his own style and so it's kind of like putting together a little bit more of that graphic cartoony stuff and and bringing it back into that superhero world and I actually really love his interpretations of these characters like this I think it's a really clean style and um, yeah it's really nice to look at so thanks so much for watching this uh, if you have any questions or comments uh, definitely leave them down below and uh, yeah I'll see you in the next video take care